Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Sean and you're watching Soul Encoded. Soul Encoded. Today we're going to be solving a leak code problem. Um, for those of you guys who are new to the channel, I used to do a hacker rank series, but basically I'm switching over to leak code. I think their UI is better. Um, just yeah, all around it's just easier to use and I think it's a better experience. So let's dive right into the problem and uh, let's get solving. The first thing you can see when you look at this problem is that it's labeled as um, easy right here. And um, let, let me quickly read the problem before we talk about it a little bit in detail. Given the binary tree, check whether it is a mirror of itself that is um, symmetric around the center. For example, and here is kind of, so the input they give it to you in an array like this, but it, the system itself, Lico system, will convert this into a binary tree. So this is a structure that you'll see. Um, and as you can see, it's symmetric. Note it's not identical. Um, so for example, it goes one, two, three, and then and four, and then right here, it's like four and then three. So it kind of like mirrors rather than being identical. So that's one kind of like important thing. And yeah, and this is a case where it's not because this is identical, right? So just quickly going over the UI, all the problems that you solve will have like kind of this structure. It will have the problem on this left side. Sometimes it'll be on the top based on like your window screen size. Sometimes it'll give a definition of like uh, the input that you uh, will be receiving. So in this case, a binary tree will be passed in as the root parameter here. And here is essentially the function declaration that uh, will be executed when you hit submit or run. So one thing to know here before I move too quickly, I just want to talk quickly about uh, what a binary tree is and why this problem is labeled as easy. For those of you who are new to programming, there's, some, there's something called data structures and algorithms. Um, in this case, the data structure portion is uh, a binary tree. Now all data structure is, is it's basically organizing uh, your data into a specific model in a way and giving it uh, certain properties and using these properties you can leverage um, these specific guaranteed behaviors to be able to um, make, write more efficient code. In a nutshell that's what data structures are and in this particular example, um, we have to work with a binary tree. Now a binary tree is basically like a non-linear data structure. The only only thing that's important that you need to know about a binary tree is that given a root node, there will be a sub. Uh, every node will have either one or two maximum uh, childs. So usually they refer to left child and right child. But yeah, let's take a look at this problem. So the reason why this problem is labeled as easy is because if you know how uh, how to traverse a tree um, using either like a depth first search or a breadth first search, it's basically testing you on can you traverse a tree and do you know what's going on when you're traversing a tree. That's pretty much the bulk of this problem and once you understand that concept, it's really easy to do. That's why that's why it's labeled as easy. But for people like if you're trying this on your own and you you have no idea what's going on, um, the my my recommendation is to start studying data structures and algorithms, and and a lot of these will become apparent to you how easy they actually are. So enough kind of theory, just talking about it. Let's dive into the problem. The is symmetric. The first thing that I when I when I see this problem, the first thing that I like to think about is like an edge case. Um, so one edge case I could think about is that if a parameter that's being passed is like null, it's like an empty parameter, then it should return true. So if root, then you could return um, true, for example. So that's like the first base case. Uh, right here, you could do like an implicit return. This will work, or you could break it up into like like a regular function call. I personally just like this. It's like Python-esque a little, but I, I prefer I prefer this. Um, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to write maybe like an inner function. Um, let's call it that first search. Um, sorry, function, function, that first search. And here we wanna pass in a, a node A and a node B. Um, so basically, my, my initial thought to solving this problem is uh, 
for these kind of calls, when you're for these kind of problems, um, we need to use recursion, or we could do an iterative approach. But I'm choosing to use a recursive approach, and all we need to say is, hey, hey, if my left uh, subtree is symmetrical to my right subtree, and then so forth, all the all the rules um, are the same below, and it hits like the very bottom of the leaf nodes, then I know that um, this whole tree is symmetrical. So that's why I'm um, basically saying node A and node B. So my plan is down here, I want to essentially call this function, return and call this function, and I want to pass node, uh, sorry, root left dot left and root dot right. And I'm getting this left and right by this kind of um, declaration right here. I, I don't really like the way they wrote it here. I, I would prefer if they did something like this. Uh, I, I just prefer like this. I don't I don't like to declare things in like single lines. I, I, I don't know. That's just how I like to program. Um, so essentially this function will call itself. And at this current state, this will be essentially an infinite loop, right? because this doesn't return anything, but inside the function, oh, sorry, it, it won't be infinite loop yet, but later when we do call it, like something like that, dot left or whatever, it will become an infinite loop. So you gotta watch out for infinite loops when you do recursions. So recursion is essentially just when a function calls itself and I'll do like an entire subject. Actually, let me quickly describe what recursion is. So recursion is, you know, it's, it's a concept from math, but basically it's a, it's a function, when a function calls itself, um, that's, what, that's basically what recursion is. And a lot of new beginning programmers and even experienced programmers um, ha sometimes have a hard time conceptualizing what a recursion, recursive algorithm is. And it's, it's because it's, it's not like linear uh, and it's very hard, sometimes it's hard to uh, follow the call stack, especially if you're doing like multiple calls, multiple recursive calls at the same time. Um, but yeah, just stick with me on this particular problem and, and, and we could get through it. But like the important thing about recursion is that you need to figure out what the base cases are of when the recursive function will have to be called back up, um, or essentially returned uh, the value. Because if you don't do that, and you, you don't set like base cases when the recursive call needs to be called back, then you'll have like an infinite loop and you don't want that in your program. You'll have like a stack overflow and then your program will crash. So what are, so I said base cases, what are base cases? So in this particular problem, I could think of a few base cases. Um, so when, when, when is this particular problem true? So what am I doing here? Right? I'm calling the, if we have one node tree, then I'm calling the left and then the right, right? So now each of those will have to continue calling the left and then the right, right? But one, one trick here, remember that we're not checking for identical uh, trees like that. We're looking for this kind of mirroring effect. It's kind of hard to do with my fingers, but it's, it's a mirror, it's not identical. So later, later on, we're gonna have to return we have to call this uh, def first search function again, but here we want to do node dot left, and we want to compare that, uh, and we want to make sure for the other node that we're checking, we want to compare it with the right, and then we also need to call it again, and then right, and then node b dot left. So what's going on here is I'm making two recursive calls at this particular point, and basically I'm saying, hey, check, take the left. Would it be this way for you guys? Well, anyways, check the take node A's left node and then check check it against node A's node B's right node, um, because at that point it would be like symmetrical, right? If if this was an identical thing, it would be more like left here and then this would be right here, right? That that's how you traverse the tree uh, and compare it with, between two. Basically, you're comparing it with each other at that at that given point in time, right? But in this case, we're checking for symmetric, like. A mirror of itself and that's what we're doing here and now the base case is essentially the 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 point at which where this function will be true is when we get to the leaf nodes without any issue so let's write that particular um, function now so if we get to node a and node a is null and also node b is null then we could return true right because we know that if both of these are null, then 
um, we have reached a leaf node. Now, if you don't know what a leaf node is, it's basically um, it, it's basically the ed end of a tree, right? We call them a leaf. We call them leaves. And um, I'll, I'll go over this in another like video where I talk about trees and like uh, the properties of trees. But just understand that trees have a root and they have uh, leaf nodes. So what else can this be? Like what what happens when um, at what point does this like algorithm have like it fails, right? So looking at this example right here, it should when it goes left, it should be the three. But here, when we're checking right, it's three and it's checking it to null. So it looks like if like one of them is null and the other one is not null, then this could be false. Um, also, we could just do the inverse of this. So when node A is valid and node B is null, then we could return false. And finally, like let's say that if this value is four and like this value is three, then obviously the values are not identical. So that's a, another thing you could do. So if node A dot val does not equal node B dot val, then return false. Um, so here I chose to kind of like do all of these in separate if statements. Um, you could put them together, uh, but you'll have just like this one long like conditional check. I personally prefer this syntax, um, but it's up to you how you want to write it. So that's essentially this. That's essentially it. This should work. So let's give it a shot. So I usually like to run the code first and then I'll submit it if the initial test case is passed. So when you're running it, it's it's basically testing on this one input and it looks like it worked. So let's submit it. And it looks like it was success, successfully accepted. It's 30.11% faster than the other JavaScript submissions, which I don't know if that's good or not. It'd be better. It's probably not that good. Um, we could probably make it faster, but it looks like it's only a few milliseconds difference like four Milliseconds versus let's, let's sum it again. See if it's faster this time. Oh, yeah, this time is 60 milliseconds for whatever reason So that pretty much solves this particular uh, problem um, To summarize what I did I Basically created I on line 14 I created I checked for an edge case solution where if no uh, not a valid like null value was passed in and now it returned that as true um i'm not sure if there's any test cases that are doing this but i figured this is a good step to add um leetcode has leetcode is pretty pretty big on leetcode is actually pretty big on putting like a null value as an input so you should always check for that here i created like a def first search function that will recursively call itself and it will basically pass the left and then the right node and then at the same time also pass the right and then the left node it might be reversed for you guys when you're looking at it and then it just re goes through that over and over again recursively until it hits uh these four possible like base cases one is if it hits the leaf nodes if both of the um basically when you hit all the leaf nodes that means you've hit like the very edge of the tree and also if one of the nodes it has a value and the other node is null um, I did I basically check for that that should return false and then finally I checked the individual value as well uh, if the values are different then they're not symmetric and therefore it will return false and at the very bottom 24 this is what like initializes initially calls the def first search uh, function passing in the left subtree of the root and then the right subtree of the root that's that's pretty much it i i hope that was um informative for you guys let me know if you have any questions uh but yeah th this is uh here's a thing about programming Here, here's a thing I, I think i might do a video on this but a lot of people ask me whether or not data structures and algorithms are worth learning and i and my answer always is 100% yes. You know, there might be some, a few people who are not really looking into, you know, getting into engineering for the, like, like to get to a certain, like you, you absolutely don't need it if you're just trying to make a website, 
and you're not really looking to work as a software engineer. Um, but if you want to do, if you really want to be an engineer at like some point in your time, if that's your goal, if you want to become an engineer, then you absolutely have to learn data structures and algorithms. You know, some people will say that like, hey, you don't really need to learn these things because you could just like look it up, right? But the question I like to ask you is, how do you know what to look up if you don't even have like a general understanding of what is possible? Like imagine if you're like a woodworker, right? And and you're trying to join two like pieces of wood together. You know, the obvious thing that most people will do is like, hey, I, I have some nails and a hammer, I'll just like nail it, right? And that might work, but then the connection might not be that strong, right? But let's say that like if you knew about all these other techniques like they're like um like using wood glue or using a joiner or even like the japanese have like a method where they like um join them together without any glue like there's all these different techniques and different tools that you can use and data structures and algorithms are essentially just like tools that you can use and leverage and patterns that were like um developed a long time ago so like the real question is why wouldn't you want to learn data structures and algorithms because it absolutely makes you a better programmer and makes your software cleaner and makes your um, programs run faster and more efficiently so but yeah so that i highly encourage you guys to start learning if you want a job it, the best like I, I i always say this if you want if you really want to get into like this industry there's a few things that you need to do i'm gonna make an entire video on this but um number one thing is have a great portfolio um study your data structures and algorithms and network that's that's essentially all you really need to get into the industry because your portfolio and networking will will, will be what gets you into the door to um interview but you need the only way you could secure that job is by studying data structures and algorithms um I mean, some companies don't do it, but I, I would say most of the like reputable, most of the companies uh, that I know of that I I personally like want to work at, they all that's like kind of like their standard, and there's good reasons for that. I'll go into more details about it in another video, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this quick. Actually, it's not that quick, but like this just kind of problem solving. Um, I think the more problems I do, I'll be less like talky, and I'll just like. You know try to like, like go in and go out uh, really quickly but it's the first one I wanted to kind of talk through it and see what people like but yeah I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you guys in the next one Bye. the weird pimple here dang it gotta refilm this nah <laughs>